Alrighty guys, how y'all doing this morning? Whenever you may get this video, Real Housewives of Atlanta. All right, it said next week we're gonna be coming to the season finale. And uh, I know normally we have 25 to 30 motherfucking scenes and whatever, but I just felt like this was a filler. I thought Phaedra was going to save the show when she put the kids and we was going on a trip. You know, I thought Phaedra was going to save it. But Fort Dixon would not let the cameras in last night, y'all. And I really wanted to see what was on and popping. But I guess, you know, maybe if you was... um whatever that whole name that's just uh one of the housewives that just went to jail if you was one of, if you was her maybe you could have got the cameras to go in or maybe you could sell your story of apollo but that just goes to show you're not that relevant okay but we started it off with candy and todd you know yes they're still there they're still on the motherfucking housewives of atlanta you know like someone said every time you see her she ran back in the chair looking like mother uh uh mother love or some motherfucking body i'm like candy we know she done already had the baby. They were discussing the baby's name. She wanted to name the baby Ace Well Tucker. And they went to a doctor's appointment, Dr. Jackie. You know, Dr. Jackie getting her promo. You go, Dr. Jackie. <laughs> Everything is like it's going well, and they're going to have a baby. They take uh, Mama Joyce with them to the doctor's appointment. And uh, Dr. Jackie is telling them that uh, basically, you know, Ty, don't get it from the front. Try to get it from the side. Try to hit it from behind, you know. And Mama Joyce sitting there making all them motherfucking faces. Like, oh, my God, you know, I did not buy in for this. But I'm here, and I got to sit and go through this bullshit, okay? So, basically, we get to Kim. Um, Kim did the commercial, y'all. Commercial, whatever we want to call that motherfucker. Five, uh, 30 seconds of fun, balling on a budget okay whatever we want to name this commercial and uh it looks cute you know it turned out fine she finally showed cynthia the um previews of it or whatever whatnot um basically she was speaking to her producer on the her manager my bad on the skype and he was saying you know you look like you did a good job but whatever was going on and they were talking about you know kenya and he was it seemed like her manager was basically saying you know would you still work with kenya you know basically he was trying to prom um promote her to work with kenya but she wasn't having it she's basically saying i'm not her boo her homie and you know when kim tried to talk ebonics you know it sounded like a white lady trying to shave but anyway Boring ass scene. Basically, Kim finally done learn how to shade, read, whatever the fuck y'all want to call it. The commercial done. They view the commercial. Moving right along. Phaedra meets with the lawyer. And uh, the lawyer shows up with uh, some kind of shit to bring it to her house. And this bitch, I'm telling you, she holy when it's necessary, okay? She a whole half of the time, and then she holy the rest of the motherfucking time. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm just not feeling Phaedra this motherfucking season. She needs to go have a, a seat in the fuck section with the rest of these motherfuckers with this bullshit. Because Phaedra, I'm sorry. I'm just not feeling you. And I feel like you packed them kids up and took them to that motherfucking penitentiary because your ass need a spot for next season. But I ain't mad at you, bitch. Do what you got to do. Excuse my French. Keep balling on the budget, Phaedra. Matt and Kenya at the house. They're checking out the um, supposedly uh, Kenya Moore mansion. Moore mansion. And uh, it's a cute little scene. I think Kenya and Matt really got a little spark or something going on. Kenya says she's kind of nervous because he's young, been there, done that. <laughs> if you just want to have your baby boo, do what you got to do and keep it moving. If you're financially able, you know Matt look like he ain't got the money. And basically, Kenya say normally she would have been the red in their DNA, their background, whatever, because she just wanted a, a successful man to have a baby by. But she see, she see that's not what God wants for her. And she says she's trying to fall back and let, you know, God take over. So, Matt is 28. And he sound like, you know, he wants to have children. They bring Mama or uh, Lori. Mama ain't Lori with them. And um, they're shooting a scene at the Moore Mansion that basically then had motherfucking 2,000 weeks to get finished. But 
she's ran into some motherfucking uh, issues. You know, we see the beam come flying down. You know, y'all duck, watch out. And uh, eventually, I guess it's going to be on and pop. And I don't know. I don't know what's going on with Miss Kenya, but do what the fuck you got to do. You know, we have our favorites, and y'all, we have to be partial. We have to be able to read these motherfuckers when they do wrong. But it was a cute scene with Kenya and Mama Lori. Ain't Lori or whoever the fuck you want to call her. I told Kenya, fuck that mama. Uh, Aunt Lori has raised you. Call her Mama Lori from now on. Mama Lori say, fuck all the dumb shit about you and Matt building a motherfucking fireplace. Let's get into what's popping with you and this motherfucker. Is there really a chemistry or Kenya, is you doing this for TV? Mama Lori is asking. Mama Lori, don't beat around the motherfucking bush. Kenya say, you know what? I'm kind of feeling him. She said, okay. And she looking at her side. I like, look, bitch, don't play with me. But, you know, you on TV, so do whatever you got to do. Me, myself, personally, my personal opinion. It looks like Kenya and Matt guy has a chemistry together. He takes her to dinner someplace where you uh, cook your own goddamn food. They look cute. He look like he really interested. Is he using her? Hey, 50-50. She might be using him. He might be using her. But they both can gain, gain. It's a win-win situation. So moving right along. And if you want to have a baby, hell, nine times out of ten, we end up taking care of these motherfuckers anyway. Even if you have a successful baby daddy and he paying you child support, you're still the one who's doing all the mother motherly thing you're there you know and i'm not knocking fathers because i know the fathers nowadays are taking these children and raising them and you know hey kudos it is what it is i'm not knocking nobody's game in this fair game porsche porsche motherfucking ass is basically doing her um photo shoot for porsche's um lingerie or whatever the fuck uh naked naked lingerie and she asked Cynthia, would she do the shoot? And uh, Sister Lori is uh, good and pregnant. She said, I'm only going to do so much, but basically, um, Portia, you're on your own. You got to get your shit together. Learn how to make it. These two motherfuckers sitting there having a conversation. They on a conference call with whomever and another manager or whatever. And uh, Portia Blonde. Lori Blonde. And both of these motherfuckers together, he said, y'all like two he say, y'all like, y'all got brains of a paper motherfucking cup. So that goes to show that the sister ain't got good sense neither. But they're cute. Portia's fine. I hope being cute and fine is going to get it. She's going to be on Celebrity Apprentice. I will watch. But as soon as that motherfucker gets to talking about trains coming through from the railroad and uh, it ain't supposed to be no train, I'm done. Photo shoot turns out nice. They don't use the time wisely. They can't uh, go shoot outside. Cynthia slayed it. One thing about Cynthia, that motherfucker can motherfucking model, okay? You can't take that from her. It is what it is. She's a beautiful young lady. She has aged gracefully, and she looks good. And that's one thing Portia <clears throat> has learned to use. And all the other girls, hey, let's take Candy. She's in the music business. And use her for a song, Kim. Nene, she ain't getting on nobody's screen because she too much. Her ego, she got a big ego, okay. Uh, Cynthia, let's use her for modeling. And uh, each girl basically take whomever and whatever. Cynthia in her uh, eyewear commercial, she sees Porsche's beautiful. She is modeling material, you know. And everybody use each other for each other's gain. And why not? You know, it is what it is. My girl, Kenya, I don't know what you got going for you. You say you're a producer, <laughs> but this shit is always blowing up in your face. But, hey, I'm rooting for you. I am rooting for you, Kenya. So, long story short, Candy and Phaedra meets up, try to make us think that this friendship they got is still somewhat okay, but we see it ain't. That motherfucking Phaedra getting them confessionals. And she could shade the shit out of everybody. But I never see Phaedra shade nobody to their motherfucking face. Kenya. Well, Phaedra is a little shady. But she ain't ready for a battle. Uh, Kim, she ain't gonna do shit. That motherfucker ain't gonna throw rice at a wedding. We still waiting for her to really, really pop off. And when she do, she might pop the fuck off and go off, okay? Just as long as you don't drag a bitch. Kim, we good. 
But now they sitting there and they talking and you could tell that these motherfuckers really don't care for each other, but they shooting this scene together. This shit is so not, it's forced. That's the word I'm looking for. And, um, I think Candy is not feeling Phaedra since she talked about Todd looking for coins in the couch. And I would be feeling the same way, Phaedra. If I was Candy, I would just get up and punch your motherfucking ass. But you're supposed to be a lady and we're supposed to use our motherfucking words. So don't punch the bitch. Fuck her up, okay? Let them come get her husband motherfucking shit, which we don't see next week. The feds is going to show up at Candy House. And uh, I think the season finale is next week. I feel like this was a filler episode. And um, can't, uh, Phaedra took the mama with her to the penitentiary to see uh, Apollo. And uh, I know you just sat out in the motherfucking car. You know, the way they edit shit. It looked like she sat in the motherfucking car <laughs> while Phaedra took the kids in. And when the kids came out, they were talking to the children. Aiden is so motherfucking intelligent. That motherfucker can formulate words and sentences better than I can. He said, I didn't like the way he cut his hair. Now, Mohawk, it was quite basically boring in my words, y'all. And mama, don't take us back to that shit. But she did it because she needs to secure her spot for next season. Y'all, that's basically all that kind of went on. I, like I said, it was basically like a filler episode. And uh, that's all I got on the housewives, okay? And I got you guys, I'll see you in the next video. And y'all have a lucky day, okay?